one of the most important things in a wrestling company. It can either make a superstar or break a superstar. Booking should be held to the highest regard. And it seems like when it comes to WWE and the main roster, their booking decisions a lot of times don't make a lick of sense. Sometimes it's perfect. Other times it is complete dog water. And this is why I feel like NXT stars don't go as far as they should have. Not because of their talent. It's because of the booking decisions provided by Vince McMahon and the people in creative. What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, you guys on my last video definitely wanted me to talk about NXT stars not being properly pushed or ruined on the main roster. And I definitely got a lot of comments agreeing with me that NXT stars are not being properly utilized or most of them haven't. And then I've gotten some, uh, some individuals that feel like I'm not in the right here or, or they're not in agreement with me. I'm not trying to be right or, you know, try to have my opinion is the, the right opinion, but there were some disagreements in the comment section and I'm okay with that. I'm cool to agree to disagree as long as it's respectful. I'm cool with that. So I'm going to talk about some of the wrestlers that I feel like did get over successfully. I want to talk about that first. And if their booking decisions, the booking decisions that was made for them could have been better. And then I'm going to talk about the ones that I feel like did not get the proper push at all. And is essentially or was essentially ruined. So that and these are my personal opinions on how I view these characters. So before I get into this, I do want to make this very clear. I do know NXT is different from the main roster or how they move, especially how they used to move things when Triple H was, was you know, in command. I understand that, but at the same time, it's under the, un the WWE uh, umbrella, and we know that it's more on the developmental side to really get people ready for the main roster. There's no denying that. So you can say it's a separate brand, which it is, but it's a brand that caters more to the wrestling fans, people that like wrestling more than just the, the I guess you could say, the theatrics. Like they like good wrestling. And it's more the WWE style to get people ready for the main roster. So I know the difference, but you can still make it work and it should work on the main roster. But we're going to get into the stars that I do feel like WWE treated them uh treated them well in booking decisions and they ultimately did get over so I'm going to go through some of them that I I came up with on a list The Shield, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose when he was uh in WWE, they were pushed correctly. Sometimes they were shoved down our throats like Roman Reigns and at one point Seth Rollins. And then there was some questionable booking with uh, Dean Ambrose. If you guys remember the whole Bane gimmick when he turned heel. There were some questionable things. But for the most part, they were in good feuds, good main event feuds. And they were at the top of the card. And it made sense. So I was okay with that for the most part. Them being pushed properly from NXT, that was good on WWE's part. Drew McIntyre, even though technically Drew was in the company uh, many years ago, then they released him, he came back in the NXT, and then they brought him to the main roster. But Drew, if we're just going off of just coming from NXT again, Drew uh, definitely benefited uh, from the booking decisions sometimes, sometimes. But um, as of from last year or whatnot, they, they went... They did the right thing by booking him in certain situations and, you know, he comes off as believable. So it worked for Drew. Kevin Owens is another person. One of his debuts was attacking John Cena. I thought that was dope. They kind of dropped the ball with him here and there, but him winning the Universal Championship was cool. Granted, we hadn't really seen too much from him outside of him feuding with Roman Reigns, but he... 
you know, he has had his main event moments, and I do like, you know, what he's been, you know, what he's done in the ring and some of the feuds he's been involved in has been pretty good. So, for the most part, they haven't been perfect with Kevin Owens. I don't think you can book someone perfectly forever, but for the most part, they did right by Kevin Owens. Now, Sami Zayn, he's kind of... He could have went in the list in the tier of not being booked correctly, but for the most part, they did Sami Zayn, you know, some service. I, I really wish he would have been able to get a world championship uh, opportunity. I mean, he had the opportunity, but like a world championship win. I think what would have been really cool is for them to feud Kevin Owens with Sami Zayn and have at the time when Kevin Owens was the world champion, have him win, but, you know, unfortunately, that didn't happen, and then I know, also, Sami Zayn had been dealing with injuries, and that kind of derailed his push, but I do like the fact that he was able to reinvent himself as a con conspiracy theorist heel, it works for him, so, for the most part, WWE did book him the best way they possibly could, so I'm okay with that as, as it stands right now, um, Samoa Joe, definitely WWE pushed him, but not to the point where I think a lot of fans wanted him to be. There's no denying Samoa Joe should have been a multiple-time world champion. I'm just being honest with you. He should have. When he was feuding with Brock Lesnar, should have been a world champion. When he was feuding with Roman Reigns, should have been a world champion. When he was feuding with AJ Styles, at some point he should have won the WWE Championship. I feel like Samoa Joe should have been a world champion before he got injured. I, I just, I feel like that should have happened, bro. He was, he's believable as a world champion. He's fantastic on the mic and you believe that he will kill you. Whether he's a heel or face, he is great. And he's great in the ring, man. So that's the only thing that I wish WWE would have did is actually gave him a world title opportunity to actually win it i mean he's had a few world title opportunities but actually win the match i thought that would be cool and you know it would have definitely enhanced his character within wwe in my opinion apollo cruz now apollo cruz at one point definitely would have been on the list of wwe uh, the characters that wwe didn't push correctly but what saved him recently was his heel turn outside of that he was just, he was just, he was a baby face that was very athletic and a lot of people didn't care for. And granted, he wasn't really putting the, the best feuds and no one was really buying into his gimmick. And I wish somebody in the back would have tried to change him up a few years ago. Because what he's doing now is great. It's him as a heel, this new gimmick he has, it's great. And I understand sometimes people don't get over right away. Sometimes it takes time. But... At one point, it looked like, damn, Apollo Crews, man, he ain't he ain't really doing much of nothing right now. But I am glad that WWE has finally given him the time and opportunity to show off his heel work. So that's the silver lining. It did take some time, but he is doing something, bringing some type of life characters, you know, life to his character. So I'm okay with that. Same way with Becky Lynch. You guys remember, Becky Lynch wasn't that over. Even though she was part of the four horsewomen from NXT, she really wasn't that over. People like Becky Lynch. like People like Apollo Crews. People like, like Becky Lynch, but people weren't buying into her. It wasn't until she snapped on Charlotte and everyone loved it. They tried to turn a heel, but everyone loved it. That is when she became over. And that was the moment she needed. And then, of course, her getting her nose broken. That enhanced her character, too. Like, things happened. It was one of those things. I don't think Becky was going to get the, the type of attention she's gotten now. I don't think she was going to be that character for WWE. I didn't think that. It wasn't until when they had her attack Charlotte and then people actually started buying into it and loving it. WWE didn't plan that. They just planned, they wanted her to be a heel, but it didn't work. And she became over, mega over. So it was cool to see. So ultimately, Becky kind of got her, 
got she got herself over in the situation of how they booked her so the booking accidentally got her over but it worked in the sense so i have to put her on the side of at least wwe put her in some type of situation where she could get over and she did even if it was accidental um gotta put oscar on this list now oscar she um she definitely when she first came in they were going with the whole she has never been beaten and i love that angle the only thing i really wish for oscar because she she was definitely over the only thing i wish for oscar is the fact that i wanted her to beat charlotte flair i believe at wrestlemania 34 fantastic match fantastic women's match she should have beat charlotte flair she should have i'm just being dead ass charlotte flair could have took that loss I'm not saying have Oscar just completely dominate and never lose, but I think she lost momentum when she lost to Charlotte. Now, she has had multiple title runs, and I'm okay with it. Oscar is cool. I can't wait for her to come back. Oscar is a, a, they have utilized her, you know, sometimes not in the best situations, you know, but for the most part, they have utilized her. So I am glad that they did do that. I just think. Her momentum slowed down just a bit when she lost to Charlotte. But outside of that, she's still a main player in the women's division. So they, for the most part, have done right by Oscar. For the most part. Cannot deny that at all. Now, these are some of the stars that I feel like WWE did not push correctly. This is my opinion on it. You can we can agree to disagree you can tell me why you disagree on this but the first person on top of this list is ricochet man i'm sorry ricochet should have at least been a mid card a a good mid card talent and when i mean a good mid card talent i mean a mid card talent that i can believe will win matches now people can say well he's not that good on the mic which is true i understand that and people are like oh all he does is slips I get that, even though that's not all that he does, but he is a fantastic worker in the ring. He is fantastic at selling. He sells like a million bucks, and he's a high flyer. I'm sorry, but I grew up in the era of when you saw a high flyer, you you thought that was cool. I was a kid watching Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy fly, flip, and do all types of tricks. RVD is a high flyer, and we all love RVD. Like, seeing these guys wrestle, as kids and teenagers, we thought this was cool. And I, I want to make this point. Why he should have gotten over and could have gotten over if WWE would have booked them correctly. Dub and Trill Billy, you would consider them as casuals. They don't watch the show barely at all outside of the clips we check out and the live streams we do. You would consider them casuals. When they first got introduced to Ricochet, I had already knew who he was from NXT. When they first got introduced to Ricochet, they thought, yo, this dude is cool. Yo, his moveset is fantastic. Yo, I wish we, you know, we could have seen somebody like this do all these crazy moves back when we was watching wrestling. They don't watch wrestling like that, but they enjoy that. Casual people can enjoy, casual people that watch wrestling can enjoy his moveset. All they have to do is book him to win important matches that he needs to win he doesn't need to win every match and i want to make this very clear everyone that comes from nxt does not need to be undefeated but they need to win they need to seem important that's the only way casual fans will give a fuck is if you seem important but they gotta book you to seem important i'm sorry ricochet is one of these guys that does not seem important he's cool got a cool move set but he doesn't seem important Somebody commented on my last video say, Ross, you don't know what you're talking about. They may end up pushing Ricochet in the future. And that could be a possibility. But right now, no one cares. Ricochet cool, but I wouldn't trust them to push him anyway. The, one of the highlights I can think of for him was facing Brock Lesnar. We knew he was going to lose to Brock Lesnar at the Saudi show. But at least we thought it was going to be an entertaining match. Brock is usually pretty good in the ring with um smaller guys and i was intrigued i was interested you watch the match he got squashed he didn't even put in a single ounce of offense and that sucks at least he could have had him do something but he didn't because they don't really look at him as a guy 
that can beat someone notable. Now, granted, he has won, I believe, the United States Championship, but does anybody really remember that title reign? Not so much. So, I'm just saying Ricochet could have definitely been utilized completely better than what he has been utilized, and I hope they do at some point. He may not be the best talker, but his in-ring work should do all the talking for him. Karrion Cross, another guy. I'm going to be honest with you. Karrion Cross was built in, in NXT as this unstoppable force. I think you keep him the same way. Make him an unstoppable force. Not everybody deserves that booking, but he could have been one of those guys. What do they do when he gets on Raw? He loses his very first match on Raw to Jeff Hardy. I love Jeff Hardy, but why does you have him lose to him? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't, doesn't work. So when he goes back to NXT to try to cut a promo, they just look at him like they just start, they the crowd in the NXT start taking over the show, talking about Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy, calling his name because he just got beat. I'm sorry. You could, in a sense, you can book someone strong and build them up as a formidable force for whoever at the future, in the future. And they didn't do that. Yes, he's got some wins. They changed his gear. He, he kind of looks like a great value uh, gladiator soldier or great value 300 character. Like, it, it's not really working the same. Him having, uh, what's her name, Scarlet with him walking down the ring. The, the All that plays in the fact that it could work, but they got to do it and they haven't done it. I don't really care too much about Karrion Cross because why? Until they start booking him and he actually gets some momentum going, in my personal opinion. He was DOA on arrival as soon as he lost to Jeff. Yeah, he got his win back, but the, who cares? We live in a generation now where people lose interest. If, if you're not entertaining or you're not showing that you're a formidable opponent, a formidable foe quick enough, that's the generation we live in. They'll just be like, yeah, I don't really too much care. He lost to Jeff. I can't take him seriously. And Jeff is fantastic. Former former world champion. But he lost his first match. I don't really care for this guy. He looks like a, a broke down gladiator anyway. So, Karen Cross is on that list. Keith Lee. Know he's had some injuries and stuff like that. I know they wanted to send him back to developmental. Like, to work on his in-ring skills. Keith Lee definitely should be a main event player. At some point or... They should have been building him up. They were building him up as a future main event player. You guys remember when they were doing Survivor Series when NXT was involved and how he got in the ring with Roman Reigns? The crowd popped. You guys remember, I forgot what WrestleMania, not WrestleMania, Royal Rumble it was. You guys know which Royal Rumble I'm talking about. When Keith Lee got in the ring with Brock Lesnar and that standoff, the crowd popped. He has that ability. You just got to let him get to that point. You got to let him string up some wins and not have him lose in certain situations. Like having him go against, I believe it was Bobby Lashley a few months back, knowing that Bobby Lashley couldn't take that loss because I believe Bobby Lashley was at the champ at that time. I forgot who he's going against where they was the champ and he couldn't, the champion can't take that loss. I don't know why they would book him in that situation, but he ended up losing. And I think he had just came back. Could be wrong. But the point I'm trying to make here is to have somebody that has potentially main event appeal, but you don't book them like a main event type individual or give them that main event vibe consistently, they tend to fall to the wayside because people just don't, they're not going to care anymore. Aleister Black, even though he's not in WWE anymore, definitely could have been a top mid car main event guy i know they were doing a lot of things to change up his entrance and stuff like that but uh i i feel like they dropped the ball on him um i feel like they dropped the ball on neville neville once again another high flyer um people really didn't too much get behind him i get it he wasn't the best on the mic or whatnot but at the same time he was fantastic in the ring and then of course injuries are to play and when injuries do happen to these talents it can really mess their momentum up because like i'm saying been saying in this video 
once people don't see you for a while or you can't win matches, casual fans tend to lose interest because it's like, well, we haven't seen him. Well, I don't really care. Well, he hasn't really won any matches, so I don't really care. So Neville is one of those guys that I feel like could have really benefited from better booking decisions. Uh, Bobby Roode, same way. Definitely should have been a main event guy, but I believe there were you know some reports saying that they weren't a big fan of how even though bobby Roode's a heel he was getting a face reaction with his original theme music they didn't like that and i was like bro that's something that works in nxt you carry it over to the main roster it will still fucking work yes he's a heel but it still fucking works his interest music his whole aura it works and then they they dropped that now granted he had some type of success with Dolph Ziggler, but who really cares about Dolph as much anymore? Even though he's a fantastic worker still, who really cares about Dolph as much? So it's just like, it's one of those things where it's like, I do feel like he should have been at some point a main event player. Baron Corbin, one of those individuals that had some type of promise in NXT, got to the main roster, and uh, it, it never really went anywhere with him. Um... They, they were trying to push him at some point. And then you guys remember what happened when he cashed in on Jinder Mahal and failed. Jinder fucking Mahal was the champ at the time. And he still failed to cash in. Now, I know there was some backstage heat. And some of these situations, backstage politicking and heat does come into play. But at the end of the day, man, that really does kill your character. And once that happened... I definitely did not care for Baron Corbin as much. I know he has the jokey, funny gimmick now, and I don't, I really don't find him that funny to me, honestly. And I have not cared about his character at all since he unsuccessfully cashed in because it's just like, whatever, bro. I get it. Something happened in the back. Cool. And I'm sure you guys will let me know. I do remember hearing there were some issues in the back and it was kind of their way to punish him i guess but either way it ruined his character for me to not give two flying fucks about what happens with baron corbin on television um enzo and Cass, one of the most over tag teams that have ever came out of nxt i want y'all to understand they were over it wasn't regular over they were mega over every city they went their catchphrase was being said. They had it. All you had to do was put the championships on them. And they never put the championships on them. And then they decided, for whatever fucking reason, to have a brilliant idea. Split them up. They never won championships. And you split them up. Tell me why. This is why I said at the beginning of the video, bookings matter. Granted, I know there were some backstage issues cool i get that but come on bro you can put the backstage stuff aside when you got one of the hottest tag teams and wwe hasn't really just had just fantastic tag team divisions like we have a few tag team groups that are good but they usually get recycled and repeated so it would have been cool to have them come in and be the next the next guys to hold up the tag team division even more. They were over. Then you had Enzo being the cruiserweight champion, which was dumb. And then you tried to push Big Cass as a solo act because he's huge. But that didn't work. It only they only worked together. And uh they're they yeah, they they dropped the ball on Enzo and Cass. I'm sorry. You can't tell me what backstage politicking issues they had that made sense for them to split them up and not have them win the tag team champions at no point. I, they were super over, bro. Super mega over. But hey, booking is, it matters. Um, Let's see. Chad Gable and Jason Jordan, man. That's another tag team I can think of offhand that really should have capital you know being able to be catapulted off their amazing technical wrestling skills and yes they got pushed but not really they not really then all of a sudden you had jason jordan and this whole cringe skit 
situation as being like the son of Kurt Angle. It was something dumb. It was just cringe. Really, really cringe. They split them up. And who remembers Chad Gable as Shorty G? Come on. I'm telling y'all, bro. Just because they give them these horrible gimmicks don't mean they're utilizing them correctly. Booking matters. They should have kept them together. Granted, Jason Jordan, I believe he did get injured. And that was one of the things that really kind of derailed him as well. But they should have never split them up from the jump before he got injured. I'm just saying, me personally, I think they should have definitely, I don't know, maybe kept them together. That would have been cool. Another, another good group of wrestlers in the tag team division. Same way with Revival. Granted, they never split them up, but they never really got as over as they should have gotten. And I think because they was in silly ass goofy segments and goofy feuds, because they're they're just a, a tag team that's there to whoop ass. That's it. They're there, they're old school tag team like wrestlers. They're there to whoop ass. They're not there to be super funny and nothing like that. They're just there to whoop ass. And they didn't get utilized correctly, in my personal opinion. I think that, you know, even though they may have gotten tag team gold, that's cool. But at the same time, the tag team belts don't mean as much as they used to. Because the tag team division is not taken as seriously as it should have been. But that's neither here nor there. And that's just some of the people I've had on the side, on the list of um, WWE not pushing these wrestlers correctly i'm sure there's others that you guys can think of comment down below let me know other wrestlers you feel like that came from nxc that wwe did not push correctly or comment down below let me know uh if you disagree with me and you feel like the people that i have mentioned um that you know they got pushed correctly by wwe and i'm not seeing it the same way because to be honest with you the people that i listed some of them they did not get pushed correctly. And then some of the other ones I listed at the beginning of the video, for the most part, they got a correct push, man. I just want WWE to continue creating new stars. And that's the only way the company will continue to thrive and, and be, you know, you know, I want it to be better. I want it to thrive. I want it to, you know, you know, get better over time. But it's going to be hard to do that when you rely on part-timers, when you rely on people that have been in the company for a while, and that's cool. But at the same time, you have all this talent that you have in one, under your umbrella, the WWE umbrella, and all you have to do is really make it work. There's no reason why it can't work. People keep saying it doesn't work because it's on NXT. No, it can't work. They just got to book it. That's it. And if something doesn't work, switch it adjust make adjustments but with vince mcmahon he only really goes for what he wants to go for at the end of the day vince mcmahon signs off on everything so what vince mcmahon says goes so if he wants somebody to go over they'll go over and if he wants somebody to be booked strongly they'll be booked strongly if he doesn't want somebody to go over it doesn't feel like they will get over he they not simple as that so I just want the best for WWE. I want the best for people that are in NXT to feel like that when they go to the main roster, they won't be left in the shadows or buried or won't be utilized correctly. I want them to be able to feel like, damn, my time in NXT mattered because now I'm starting to feel like what's the point of getting over in NXT when you go to the main roster? There's a good chance they're not even going to try to push you correctly. What's the point that's just my opinion so comment down below let me know if you agree with my statements if you disagree which wrestlers you feel like did get over with wwe coming from nxt which wrestlers you feel like didn't get over from uh, with wwe coming from nxt appreciate all your love and support road to 60k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace